this past week. Uh, Anyways, like I was saying, this past week I got a whole bunch of messages on my Facebook and my Instagram saying that I should make a rim riser. And at first I was like, you know, I don't have any rims that I'm, you know, willing to sacrifice. But I was going through the rim department the other day and I found some that will work. This is from the TKO drum set. It's off the 13 inch Tom and it's a four lug rim. So I don't think I will ever use this thing. So that makes it a perfect candidate for me to cut up. Along with the rim, I'll need some sort of spacer and then a longer tension rod, so we'll get to that after I cut up the rim. So in here are all of my spacer related things, if I can even get this thing out. That wasn't impossible. I could have sworn that I had the perfect thing for this application, but I can't seem to find it. So instead I have these things which are a little bit thick, uh, but I have four of these so I can kind of adjust the length. So I think I'll try these first and if they don't work then we'll try something else. Also, if you're following along at home and can't find a spacer at a store or something, something that's easily available are these lamp parts. So I don't know exactly what you call this, but it's like lamp all thread. So basically the socket screws onto this and then the, the wire of the lamp goes through there. So it's like hollow all thread, but you can find this at any hardware store and this would work well for this application. You will also need a longer tension rod and I thought about using a bass drum tension rod, but uh, it turns out that the threads stop right there, so this won't work. But I do have these which are from a Red Otom which are longer, so hopefully these do work. This tension rod will work and I did cut one of the spacers in half, so I'm using one and a half of them. The tension rod will go through the riser and then it will put on the spacers. Then that will go through the rim and into the lug. And then we'll tighten it up with the drum key that I don't have. And she's good to go. So I thought now would be a good time to actually research what this thing does because I just saw a picture and was like, oh, I can make that and now I'm here. And I just looked it up and it says that the rim riser is a cross stick enhancer that allows you to get that perfect cross stick sound every time while offering the player a better grip on the stick. Cross stick playing becomes easier and drummers are able to perform difficult patterns freely. And as far as it being easier to play cross sticks with the rim riser, I actually think it's a little bit harder. When you play a cross stick, when the stick hits the rim, your thumb kind of bottoms out on the head because there's nowhere else for it to go. But when you play a cross stick with the riser, it almost seems like your thumb wants to slip off the stick and go all the way to the head because there's a space between the stick and the head. So I would actually say that it's a little bit more difficult to play with the riser. It's not, you know, hard, it's just different. So I guess it just takes some getting used to. And before I show you how it sounds, the last time I had a video where I played a cross stick, people were like really mad at me that I played with the tip of the stick like that instead of using the butt of the stick. 
But I've always enjoyed the sound of a cross stick with a stick like this because it's a little bit more bright, and if you flip it around and use the butt end of the stick, it's a little bit more thuddy. So there really is no right or wrong way to face the stick when you play a cross stick. It all depends on the musical application and the sound that you're trying to get. So that's why I'm playing it like this. So there actually are two new sounds that I found with this thing. The second one isn't really a new sound, but we'll get to that in a second. But the first one is instead of resting your hand on the head and muffling it, if you lift it up off of the head and then do a cross stick, you get more of the snare sound and it sounds like a ping. And if you don't know what a ping is, it's like a rim shot. But instead of playing the rim shot like here on the stick, you play it way up here. And then the second sound that I was talking about, which is more of a technique than a sound, but a lot of you guys are probably familiar with uh, when you do a cross stick, instead of just hitting the rim of the snare, you can hit the rim of the tom and then hit the rim of the snare and get like a flamey cross stick sound. So I actually have a really, really, really old video where I kind of explore this technique a bit. And I found this, you know, extra dimension you can add to it. So instead of just having one grace note on the tom and then having the main note on the snare, you can have two grace notes on the tom and then the main note on the snare. And to get the two grace notes on the tom, you just hit the tom rim and then the tension rod of the tom and then the main note is on the snare. It's kind of hard to do slow, but you can hear the three notes. So you can probably already guess where I'm going with this, but uh, let me show you anyways. So for the first time ever in the world of drums, music, or anything for that matter, I present to you the quadruple cross stick. At least that's what I'm calling it. Also, I don't know if this is the first time it's ever been done, but we'll say it is. Oh yeah. I just had no idea what I was doing, but you get the idea. So in my opinion, I really don't see a, a purpose for this thing because as far as the sound goes, it doesn't really sound that much different than playing on the rim. So unless you plan to do a whole bunch of quadruple cross stickings, patent pending R David R 2017, then I probably wouldn't buy this thing. It's really bulky and it's loose and you can see it spins a lot. And just the fact that it sticks up so far off of the rim you know, if you were to drop this drum or to hit it the wrong way, I wouldn't be surprised if the tension rod broke off or even damaged the lug. So if you plan to make one of these, one thing that I would do is I would make it span the distance of two lugs so there'd be two tension rods that are spaced up so that way it's not as wiggly and not as loose. So if you have a 13 inch eight lug snare, then you'll need a 13 inch eight lug rim, obviously, in order for the lugs to line up. So again, I really don't see a need for one of these, but if you've used one of these or owned one of these, I'm curious to know what you guys think about it and how you like it. Also, if you've never heard of you know this thing before, I'm curious to know if you would 
you know, use this thing after seeing this video. So let me know in the comments what you think about this thing, but that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.